Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving an interesting homemade equation with complex numbers. We have z squared minus z bar squared equals 4i and we're going to try to solve for z. So in other words, we're going to try to find the complex number or complex numbers that satisfy this equation. Do you think there are any solutions? If there are any solutions, how many? Finitely many, infinitely many, a couple, maybe one. Think about that and maybe just guess at this point, right? And we're going to verify that. So when you get a problem like this, it's probably tempting to use difference of two squares, right? Isn't it? When you see two numbers that are squared and there's a minus sign between them, it's called the difference of two squares. So in other words, a squared minus b squared can be written as a plus b times a minus b. This identity also works with complex numbers, right? So we can go ahead and try to factor this as z plus z bar multiplied by z minus z bar. By the way, what is z? What is z bar? If you're new to complex numbers, go ahead and check out my lecture videos. I made a bunch of videos on basics of complex numbers. And if you're also interested in number theory and algebra, pro algebra problems, you can check out my other channel, CyberMath. Okay, great. Now, what happens if we factor this? Do we get something nicer? What is z plus z bar? Well, a complex number and its conjugate are ba basically, they make up a nice pair such that when those two numbers are added, we always get a real number. So this is a real number, okay? And when we multiply them, we also get a real number. But when we subtract, we don't always get a real number. I mean, if the numbers are real, of course their difference will also be real, but come on, we're talking about complex numbers here in general. So how do we go from this to the solution? Maybe we can conjecture. We can make a guess and try to confirm it. For example, if uh, this part is real, the other part must be imaginary, right? Because we're multiplying something by something and we're getting 4i. So maybe this is 4 and this is i. Is that possible? I mean, that's a possibility, right? So let's go ahead and test it. But that's not the only possibility. The sum could also be 2 and the difference could be 2i. Or the sum could be 1 and this could be 4i. So we're going to need to look at all these possibilities, right? And are those the only possibilities? I mean, z plus z bar can also be 8. And then maybe their difference will be half i. I mean, half an i. Half of i. <laughs> what is half of i? I mean, 1 half times i. That's what I meant. Like, there's, you can't really cut i in half, can you? Maybe you can. In complex word, everything is possible. So let's go ahead and test uh, these cases. For example, how about this one? 4 and 2. 2i. Wait a minute. Was it 4 and i? Okay, let me fix this real quick because there's a misalignment. So, all right, this one too. So, we're saying that if this is 4, this is i. Great. And then we can get 2 with 2i and 1 with 4i. These are just integer cases, obviously, but I'm guessing that the answer is probably the, I mean, the sum is an integer. Come on, it can't be a fraction, right? I don't think so. But I could be wrong. So let's go ahead and test these out, uh, starting with this one, okay? This gives us z plus z bar equals 4, and z minus z bar equals i. By the way, this gives you a really nice system that you can solve for, because all you have to do is add these up. You get 2z, or not 2z, <laughs> do you z what i z? Hopefully. From here, you can divide by 2, and you get 2 plus 1 half of i. Uh-oh. The imaginary part is a fraction, which is, I guess, fine in this case. So would this work? Hmm. Let's test it out. If I plug it into the original equation, is it going to work? z squared minus z bar squared. Let's find out. This is z squared. And this is z bar squared. And that should give me 4 and it does. Actually, you don't really need to test this out because you can just test both of these equations. The sum of z and z bar is 4, their difference is i. It's verified. Good. We got a solution. Yay. How about the second one? 2 and 2i. Let's test that one. z plus z bar is equal to 2. z minus z bar is, oops, I was going to write zi, but z bar, I meant. 
and this would be 2i. When you add these up, you're going to get z plus z, which is 2z, equals 2 plus 2i. And then from here we get, uh oh, we got a different solution, 1 plus i. Does this work? I don't know. Let's test it out. I do, but just let me just pretend that I don't. Uh, z bar is 1 minus i. So when you go ahead and add these, you get 2. When you subtract, you get 2. Wait a minute. We're just solving a system. And obviously, the solutions satisfy the system, right? That's how we got that. How do we know for sure, though? Maybe we can just check the first equation because if it's a solution of the system and the first equation, it should definitely satisfy the second one, right? I mean, it's not always guaranteed if because a solution to a system may not satisfy. Is that possible? A solution to a system is not going to satisfy one of the equations. Maybe. I don't know. You could probably find a system like that. <laughs> Go ahead and think about it. But looks like I'm finding a lot of solutions. 1 minus 1 plus i is a solution. And then uh, this is a solution. And then you can continue to do this with different numbers. And you're going to realize something interesting. Okay, let's do one more. And then hopefully you'll get to see the pattern. 1 with 4i. That's the next one I'm going to test. And this time I'm going to add these up again. I'm not going to do anything different. This time 2z equals 1 plus 4i, and then z is equal to 1 half plus 2i. So far, here's the solutions I found. Okay, let me list them so maybe a pattern will emerge. 2 plus 1 half of i, 1 plus i, 1 half plus 2i. Notice that, by the way, I put three dots because I haven't checked all the cases, and I'm hoping to find more solutions. So let's just leave it like that. But if you look at this very carefully, you probably need a little bit more if you don't see the pattern. But the pattern looks like, first of all, they all have a plus sign. You know why? Because I went with positive integers. If I use negative numbers, like for example, if I said, okay, suppose this is negative 4 and this is negative i, then we would get uh, negativity, right? Uh, that would be too negative. I don't like that. I want to stay positive. But definitely, I think, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, negative 2 minus 1 half, I would be a solution too. Okay, what is the pattern? The pattern is hidden in the real and imaginary parts. Can you see it? 2 and 1 half. Hmm. They look like reciprocals, maybe something else. I mean, they could just be working for 2 maybe, something else is going on. I check this and I get 1 and 1. Hmm. 1 and 1 are reciprocals too, so that might work. But the thing is, how do we verify? So the problem, the issue with the first method, did I call this the first method, by the way? I forgot, but let's call it first method. So the issue with the first method is we're kind of testing several cases. We have only done three, but we could do more. And it kind of gives us an idea. A pattern uh, seems to be clear, but we can't be sure. It's not a proof by any means. So we do need a more solid method to approach this problem. In other words, how can we solve this in a more general case. That's where the second method comes in. And if you do know of a third method, please let us know. By the way, I just thought of something that might be helpful. Let me rewrite the original problem before I write second method. z squared minus z bar squared is 4i, right? Now, think about it. Can I just make up z and would it satisfy? No, because z bar depends on z so they have to work together so we do have uh, some uh, we do we need to have a special relationship between the, the the numbers so maybe i can do the following can i just conjugate both sides because when i conjugate i get the conjugate of a difference so that would give me uh, the conjugate of z squared minus the conjugate of z bar squared equals the conjugate of 4i which is negative 4i would that give me another solu uh, I mean, equation so I can still solve that as a system? I mean, I already had a system, but that came from a single equation, which could be problematic. I'll tell you why it's kind of problematic. It's not, but kind of. So here's the question. What is the conjugate? I keep saying conjugate, but that should be conjugate. What is the complex conjugate of z squared? Is it the conjugate of z squared? Is this an identity? Let's put a question mark because we don't know what it is, right? We're not sure. Well, here's how you can think of uh, conjugate of z squared. It's the conjugate of z times z, right? And then, as you know, the conjugacy applies to multiplication. It separates it. 
uh-oh, that gives us conjugate of z squared. So that's actually an identity. Nice. So maybe I can do this. This should give me, uh, let's write it down, uh, z bar squared. I should probably use parentheses to make it more clear. And then z squared. Because what's going to happen here is these two bars are going to cancel each other out. Okay, make sense? The conjugate of the conjugate is the original number. And that's going to give me negative 4i. And then with the first equation that I have, and I'm going to use parentheses again to be consistent, what am I getting? I'm getting something interesting. 0 equals 0. Beautiful. <laughs> that is very consistent, isn't it? And that kind of tells you something which is going to be more clear with the first method. So let's go ahead and solve it with the more appropriate way to do things. And this is how it is. Sorry for this problem, a plus bi, which is the name of this channel, by the way, I'm going to use z equals x plus yi because this is a locus problem, as you will see in a little bit. Now I'm going to go ahead and replace z with that. So z bar would be x minus yi, which is the complex conjugate. And now we're, gonna, we're running into a scenario like this. We could have done this before, but I still wanted to show you the first method because I think that's also interesting. Now, if you expand it, you're going to get x squared minus y squared plus 2xyi. Careful because i squared is negative 1. Don't ever forget that. Minus x squared minus y squared minus 2xyi. And that should give you 4i. Nice. This is really cool because we're solving it in the general case. So this could be considered a proof, sort of. x squared cancels out. We y squared cancels out. Wow. Obviously, they are the same, right? So now we get 4xyi equals 4i. i cancels out. 4 cancels out. A lot of things cancel out. We end up with xy equals 1, which means y equals 1 over x. I said a locus problem because we did not get a particular solution, but we actually got a family of solutions, infinitely many solutions in other words, because if you change x, y will change. And going back to the examples that we found, sample solutions, notice that I, I talked about reciprocals. And yes, as long as you have a complex number in the form of x plus yi, where y, the imaginary part, is the reciprocal, in other words, we are talking about complex numbers in this form where x does not equal 0, then we got a solution. Let's go ahead and take a look at what Wolfram Alpha provides. Ta-da! Great! Wolfram Alpha can find the exact same solution. And since this is a locus problem, you could definitely graph this in the argon plane uh, by graphing y equals 1 over x, and this would be the set of all complex numbers that satisfy this relationship, which was z squared minus z bar squared equals 4i. And this brings us to the end of this video. Th Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.